We're here today to talk about the Keystrack I4E Impact Crusher. My name's Bert Hart, I'm from the team here at Equip2 and I sit in the position of General Manager. So we'll be running through the components of this machine and explaining why this machine can be helpful in your operation and from turning a waste product into a valuable product. So in here is obviously our control cabinet. So the brains of the machine, you can see in here, this machine is, this is one electrical cabinet, um, and this is where we run the operation of the plant. So we've also got a remote control, which we bring standard with our machines. So we do our start up here, and showing here is our interlock, safety interlock system, or lockout system. So we have our A key and our B key. So when this A key is out of the system, there's no possible way we can actually start the plant. Just a couple of things I like to talk about here on these cabinets that Keystrack's done a very good job of is put this on spring mounted springs so the whole thing doesn't get affected by a vibration. And all the cabinets are pressurized so we've actually got an air pump which is pressurizing that cabinet, minimizing any dust that's gonna go inside and damage any of the electrical components. We're now up in the engine bay. So at the moment we've got this machine set up with the gen set up on the top. So this machine's fully electric, all the conveyors are electric, the impact crush is electric, and it runs electric power pack to set up the plant for our hydraulics. As you can see, we've got a, a lifting assembly here. So this gen set can lift off, and we can plant it away and out of the dust, and we run our cable to the control cabinet. So the advantage of this is it keeps it away from the dust, and we can also run other machines from this gen set. So we've got an Aspire 125 kilowatt, so we can run a, a screening plant completely off the same generator. So it's a matter of um, inside the engine unit here, we've got a pump, a hydraulic hand pump, and then unlocks the container locks that's mounting this to the machine. So once it's unlocked, we can lift the whole unit off and place it on the ground. So it's also a lot easier to service. Um, everything's nice and accessible in here. We're running the Cummins engine and we've got um, access to our filters, air filters, and our fuel. So on this machine, the fuel consumption is sitting around about 27 to 35 litres an hour, so very, very fuel efficient. And to add another machine to it, it only sucks about another three litres. So if we're going to run a screening plant off here, the, the, the units are actually only going to suck an extra three litres. So it just shows how efficient it is by having a, an oversized generator running two pieces of equipment. In the case where we've got power on site, we can plug this machine directly into the mains power, which means we actually don't even have to use this generator. It's here then as a backup. So I'm just standing now up on the feeder of the I4. This, this feeder bin's quite a big bin, it's eight cube. And you'll see that we're running the steel apron feeder. So the reason we run a steel apron feeder, it's a lot more heavy duty, similar to our scalping screens. This feeder will last a lifetime of the machine. And it's also a lot better for even feed. So because it's going uphill, we've got even feed going onto the next belt. And so with all the key track feeders and the frames, we've got Hardox bins and Hardox framework. So that's a Domex product, which means it's a lot lighter for transportation, but a lot stronger and lasts a lot longer than a standard mild steel. Now, this moves on to another separate conveyor. So jump down in here. The reason we have a separate conveyor, this is actually a little bit faster than what the apron feed will feed it at. And it just means that the material is split and then it's feeding into our impact chamber with a lot more even feed. So some awesome results out of this plant has been that blow bars have got very, very nice um, wear and straight. And in, underneath here, we've got a, uh, a metal detector. So likes of a cone crusher, they direct feed into the cone, and when your metal was detected, the belt will stop, and you've actually got to come up here and then grovel through the material to try and find that steel component. With this system, the feeder, this belt will stop and the feeder will stop, and then automatically, this belt will reverse back the other way it'll send the material out on our side discharge belt and then we've got a magnetic head drum on this and so it actually pulls that steel away from the product and sends the steel down a separate chute. Once that's cleared, 
the belt will reverse back again and we can continue production. So the ideal where this really, really helps in our production um, results is the machine can continue running without the operator having to hop of his loader or excavator. Um, the machine drops the steel out and then it can continue crushing, making sure we can optimize performance out of this plant. So we're back down the bottom now and just, just showing the side belt. So once that, um, once we've metal, detected some metal, it'll spin back, feed the gravel onto this belt and then our steel will come down the chute, dropping onto the tracks. So whether it be a digger tooth, bit of reinforcing or whatever, that's gonna um, do damage to the crusher. So that system is working very, very well for us. So we're here now at the screen box. This is running the same screen as our R3E and the R3H. So the at the moment we've got that set up with the four mil poly ripple because we've been making some crusher dust. But that'll lower down right down to the ground, making it nice easy for us to be able to change our mats out, um, just minimizing anything for height safety. So for transportation, this conveyor here folds at this point here, right and underneath. We can also detach our screen box. So you can see we've got a leg up in here. That then becomes a foot. And we can take our whole screen box off the machine with some quick couplers and one a couple of pins to pull. And we just back the machine off the screen box. Then it flows through onto our overs conveyor. We call it the OSR. That's on hydraulic ram, so that can move in and out to be able to capture the returns belt. So this is our returns, which anything that's not passing our four mil is then going back to the crusher for another hit. Typically with this kind of product, we expect to see up to 30 to 40% in returns because we're trying to make a, a four to nine down to dust. So we're just here showing the main control cabinet for the plant. As you can see on the smaller one, we've got our springs. And in here, there's a air cleaner, which feeds into this plant here, into the control cabinet, keeping it nice and fresh, clean air. And then we've got a cooler here. This water cooler is for the main electric motor, keeping that cool. Typical keys track, some nice cool features here, strong wire ropes and a door stay. So that when we're actually working here, we can be here safely without the door slamming on us. Going through to the hopper, we've got our controls for folding our hopper up and down. And as you can see, just in here, we actually don't have to climb up in the hopper to lock it. So we've got a hydraulic ram in here, which then wedges up and locking to that into position. So we're gonna go and open the crushing chamber now. So for our lockout, we're taking an A key, unlocking the master panel, and we take ourselves a B key. So once we've got the B key, we're then gonna unlock this locking tab which then means that we can open our doors out. So as you could understand, this machine here makes a lot of dust. So we've got um, locking tabs here, top and bottom, and then our lever to open it. So also to minimize the dust, our discharge feeder, see it's got a, a full seal through here. So we'll just open the store up, so it's cantilevered. So we've got doors this side and the other side, giving us very, very good access inside the chamber. So a little bit about this machine, we call it the Rick, which is reversible impactor. So we can spin the rotor clockwise or anti-clockwise. So materials coming in through vertical and the blow bars coming through and heading up into our primary area and then going through the crushing chamber, um, breaking that product down. So the reason we have it as a reversible is we wear our bars to a point where we've got 20 mil of flat left, and then the machine will automatically, within our settings, will reverse the other way. So if we work out that it's gonna take us four hours to get that curve, we can set in the computer that we want it to reverse in four hours. So what it does, in that four hour period, both these aprons, they move out and in, which frees up any stickiness of material around the chamber. And then it'll move this one back in to our setting, let's say 20 mil. And then the machine will start up all by itself, and but reversing in the other direction. 
So if we talk about what we can feed this plant with, our settings in here at the moment, we're at 250 mil, because we've you know, got small feed going into it. That can open up to 400, which means we can do a larger feed size. But obviously we won't be doing a large feed size going down to a, such a ratio of four, four mil. Cool. So for changing our blow bars, we've got our two bolts, which is holding that holding plate, and the bar slides out, which will use the either onboard crane or a mobile crane. In terms of our wear plates or our impact plates, you can see they are slotted in there, cast in, so these slide out sideways, making it nice and easy. And there's only three different types all through the chamber. So accessibility, you can see, is, is very, very nice and easy. And that other side will also opens up. So when it comes to changing our side plates, you can see it's nice and simple for our fitters to, to make those changes. So a little bit more about this rotor. This weighs 2.7 tonne, and it's going up to speeds of 53 meters a second. So when we talk about inertia, we've got a 600 width, and at that speed, there's not a lot of argument with the rock. So main of the material is broken at the blow bar, and then you get a smaller percentage against the aprons, um, and then a, a tiny bit, which is autogenous, is probably only about 4%. So where this can make a huge difference in our production and energy cost is actually the material is, we're actually using inertia and weight to break the material, whereas on a VSI, it's coming down vertical, transferring horizontally, and having to put a lot of energy to be able to get that inertia of the rock hitting those rock sidewalls. Whereas in this system here, we've got weight and speed to be able to make that difference. And so at 36 liters an hour in fuel, um, very, very cost effective. So as we're talking about speed of this rotor, as our bars wear, we can have a setting in our computer so that as it, if it lowers by 20 mil, the machine will automatically speed it up to compensate that meters per second on the diameter of the crusher. So what that does for you is ensuring that you're having consistency of tonnage, consistency of spec on our end product. So you might say, well, what's this machine actually good for? How's it gonna add value to any quarries in New Zealand? So this current test we we're turning waste product, which is peas, so four to eight mil, into crusher dust, so zero to four. It can also be used for making chip. So if we have a feed of 20 to 80 or 20 to 120, we can crush it down to a 20, giving it a very, very cubical sized product, and then be continue to be washed into eroding chip. So in other applications, we can also use an all-in feed, crushing from, say, a zero to 200, 0 to 250 to either a GAT 40, GAT 20, or a GAT 65. So this machine is not only just for crushing dust, it can be used for all those other products, having making a very good fit. So essentially it does a job of a secondary and tertiary crusher being a cone and a bar mac, or, or an impact and a bar mac. Thank you for listening, that's a little bit about the i4e. There's so much more to learn about this machine. If you want to know more, be in touch with our team here at Equip2.